Super Wild Card Weekend is over. Time to assess the teams that remain. Aaron Rodgers may not like this matchup. He's 0-3 against San Francisco in the playoffs. His most postseason losses against any team, and that includes the NFC title game two years ago. And then, there were eight. Here's hoping the divisional round will feature better refereeing and more down-to-the-wire games. As we head into the final eight, here's a look at how the remaining survivors stack up in our divisional round power rankings. Number eight, San Francisco 49ers. Last time's ranking, 10. It was the first 49ers-Dallas Cowboys playoff matchup since the 1994 NFC Divisional Round. Now, nothing will ever top their legendary 1981 NFC title game, but this latest chapter may be the second-best 49ers-Cowboys playoff game ever. The underdog 49ers came into AT&T Stadium and absolutely took it to the 13-win Cowboys. Don't look at the final score, San Fran should have won by more. Jimmy Garoppolo didn't have to play great for San Fran to win. Not when the rushing offense is racking up 169 yards and two scores. Or when the vaunted Dallas offense is being held to 307 total yards. And certainly not when your defense holds CeeDee Lamb to one catch, Amari Cooper to 64 yards, and Ezekiel Elliott to 31 rushing yards. Even if Jimmy G didn't play great, every win only increases his trade value. Or perhaps his chances of remaining the starter in San Fran for one more year. Lots of 49 49ers fans will roll their eyes at that, but moving on from a winning QB is so much easier said than done. Anyway, this was arguably the greatest all-around performance of Kyle Shanahan's coaching career, and the effort into Marco Ryan's defense should only increase his value in the head coaching market down the road. Up next for the 49ers, an opponent they just so happen to have defeated in each of their last three postseason matchups, Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay will be the overwhelming favorite to win, but trust us, this is not a matchup they want. San Fran has the explosive front seven and virtually unstoppable ground game to give these Packers some major issues. Rivalry renewed at Lambeau Stadium this Saturday. Don't miss it. Number seven, Cincinnati Bengals. Last time's ranking, seven. It was closer than it should have been, but the Bengals ultimately held off a late Las Vegas Raiders rally for their first playoff win since the 1990 season. What more can we say? The Bengals franchise deserves this. It's hard not to be happy for this fan base, even if you are a Raiders fan. The young duo of Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase did more than enough to power Cincinnati past a battle-tested and determined Vegas team. Bengals fans should be extra excited seeing Joe Burrow living up to the Joe Cool moniker that the great Joe Montana previously held. Burrow embraced the pressure in a high-stakes game. He looks so calm, cool, and collected up there. Unlike past Bengals stars, Burrow is looking like someone who can actually come through when it matters most. This core isn't going to blow games like the Bengals of the 80s or those Andy Dalton-led teams. Winning the AFC North was special enough. Ending a 31-year postseason win drought was a nice bonus. But now, the Bengals have to travel to Tennessee to take on the top-seeded Titan. They have nothing to lose here. Nobody gave them a chance to make the postseason at the start of the year. But here they are, a part of the Elite Eight. And they may not be done just yet. Number 6, Los Angeles Rams. Last time's ranking, 8. The Los Angeles Rams were giving us many reasons to question them heading into the postseason. Matthew Stafford was turning the ball over at an alarming rate, their defense was getting shredded on a weekly basis, and it looked like the wheels were beginning to fall off at the worst time possible. And then they went out and silenced the critics by dismantling the Arizona Cardinals on Monday night. Stafford and the aerial attack was clicking. Sony Michelle and Cam Akers dominated on the ground, and the defense stymied Kyler Murray in the Arizona offense all night long. The cards had no answer for Aaron Donald, Von Miller, and the rest of that Rams front seven. That was easy, but things are about to get a lot more difficult for LA as they travel to Tampa for a divisional round matchup with the Bucks. These two teams met in week three as the Rams cruised to a 32-24 victory at home. That was almost four months ago. Things have changed since then. And we don't have to tell you about playoff Tom Brady. The Rams will have their work cut out for them, no doubt. But they can play like they did last week, you have to like their chances of dethroning the defending champs. Number 5. Buffalo Bills. Last time's ranking, 5. Well, 
That had to feel good. Nobody needs to be reminded about how much the Bills were humiliated by the longtime AFC East bullies during the Tom Brady Bill Belichick era. After being embarrassed time and time again by the Pats for nearly two full decades, the Bills finally got their George McFly on Biff Tannen moment. Josh Allen once again solved Belichick's defense, racking up 308 passing yards and 5 passing touchdowns. He also hit 66 rushing yards, didn't turn the ball over once, and took zero sacks. And the league's number one defense was pretty good too. They only allowed 305 yards of offense, sacked Mac Jones three times, and picked him off twice. Buffalo didn't allow a touchdown until late in the third quarter when the game was practically over. And just like that, the Bills are back in the divisional round for the second straight year. And for the second straight year, they'll have to conquer Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs at Arrowhead if they want to have a chance at playing for a Super Bowl. Casey destroyed Buffalo in last year's AFC Championship game, but the Bills got some revenge by crashing Mahomes and company 38 to 20 on the road back in week five of the regular season this may be a divisional round matchup but it's not too crazy to think of it as a unofficial afc championship game these two clubs are by far the most balanced in the conference and they have the two best quarterbacks in the conference as well regardless of where the afc title game is played the winner of kc versus buffalo has to be considered the favorite against either cincinnati or tennessee but no it's not premature to call this the most hyped up AFC playoff game since the last Tom Brady Peyton Manning matchup in the 2016 AFC Championship game. Are the Bills ready to avenge last year's heartbreaking loss? I, for one, can't wait to find out. Number 4 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Last time's ranking? 4. The defending Super Bowl champions made easy work of the Philadelphia Eagles at home on Super Wild Card Weekend. Not including last year's Super Bowl, which technically wasn't a home game, but was played at Raymond James Stadium, this was the Bucks' first postseason victory at home in 19 years. Yeah, life's good for the Bucks in the Tom Brady era. All those injuries on offense haven't been enough to stop a team that has only lost once dating back to Week 11. The entire defense was in full lockdown mode against the Eagles' high-powered offense, making Jalen Hurts look every bit like the playoff rookie he is. The Super Bowl hangover hasn't hit Bruce Arians' squad just yet. It topped their win total from last year and avoided the dreaded one-and-done trend of many other recent Super Bowl winners. They are now three more wins away from the repeat, but a dangerous Rams team stands in their way next. They didn't have a good game plan the last time these two teams met, but if there's anyone who can figure out the necessary adjustments, it's Tom Brady and Bruce Arians. Number 3. Kansas City Chiefs Last time's ranking? 3. The Chiefs have taken the throne from the Patriots as the NFL's new model franchise. With Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid at the helm, this team continues to make deep runs in the playoffs. Mahomes looked as good as ever against a stingy Pittsburgh defense, and the unforgiving Kansas City D was sure to end Ben Roethlisberger's career on a sour note. Though he had one pick and was sacked three times, it was mostly easy pickings for Mahomes. He was 30 of 39 for 404 yards and five touchdowns. Pittsburgh's defense had no answer for Travis Kelsey, who racked up five catches for 81 yards and a score. How good is the depth of this team? Jarek McKinnon was the Chiefs' top rusher and their second-best receiver behind Kelsey. Little used Byron Pringle hauled in two touchdowns, and even offensive lineman Nick Allegretti caught a TD. This Chiefs team is looking a lot more like the 2019 group that had playmakers all over the field on both sides of the ball. And Mahomes is certainly enjoying the rebuilt offensive line, but he's going to need them to show up once more on Sunday against a top-notch Buffalo defense. The Bills just might be the toughest test remaining in Kansas City's quest for a second Super Bowl in three years. Getting past the league's top defense and a team that annihilated them back in week five would serve as a giant statement win. If there is one game you watch all season, this is it. Get your popcorn ready. Number two, Tennessee Titans. Last time's ranking, two. The Titans enjoyed that much-needed bye week, but were probably not too thrilled about the wildcard week of outcomes. Surely, they would have preferred a matchup with the Raiders, Steelers, or maybe even the Patriots. But that's a moot point now. The Titans have to focus on stopping a red-hot Bengals team that hasn't lost a meaningful game since week 14. Derrick Henry should be back, 
but how much of a workload will he get? That's the main question for this matchup, because Ryan Tannehill struggled to lead the passing game at times without the superstar running back around. If Henry isn't much of a factor, Tennessee will need Julio Jones and AJ Brown to win their pivotal one-on-one -on -one matchups. Is it a bad time to note that even with Henry, the Titans lost 31 to 20 at Cincinnati just last season? It's also worth noting that the two instances in which the Titans were the AFC's top seed, 2000 and 2008, they failed to reach the Super Bowl. Can Mike Vrabel and company break that trend? They're playing against a Bengals team that has nothing to lose. But these Titans have beaten top teams all year. If they can do it again just a few more times, they'll be playing in their first Super Bowl since the 1999 season. Number 1. Green Bay Packers Last time's ranking, 1. Aaron Rodgers must overcome his playoff kryptonite if he's to lead Green Bay to a third straight NFC Championship game appearance. Matt LaFleur and Kyle Shanahan meet again, with plenty at stake. And don't forget the history that these two have of working together. Who knows if LaFleur would have even been Green Bay's head coach if it weren't for his success with Shanahan. The Packers were probably bracing for a showdown against the winner of the Rams-Cardinals game, but instead, they'll host the surging 49ers. You know, the team that eliminated Rodgers Packers in the 2012 Divisional Round, 2013 wildcard round, and most recently, the 2019 NFC Championship game. The thing is, Green Bay looked awfully scary throughout the regular season. Now they have J.R. Alexander and Zedarius Smith inching towards their returns. The NFL's top team is getting two key Pro Bowl level players back on defense just in time for the playoffs. Good luck with that, Jimmy G. There are so many enticing storylines around this game. The top one, of course, is the possibility that this could be Rodgers' final outing as a Packer. He admitted that retirement is an option after this season. Even if A-Rod comes back for 2022 though, we still don't know if the Packers did enough to repair the relationship to the point where he won't seek a trade again. All of this is for another day however. Right now, the Packers have one goal in mind. The Super Bowl. Does Rodgers finally get the better of the Niners in the postseason? Sit back, pull up a chair, and enjoy this game. But who do you think will win this week's divisional round games? Join us in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.